Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here. Uh, <laughs> we got my great friend John here. We just got through talking about a little bit and catching up a little bit. And then I realized that I wasn't recording on multiple devices. Uh, so yeah, we're starting from the top. We talked about how he's got a dope ass Looney Tunes shirt on that I thought was something else. And then I called uh, the, what is it? The Marshmallow Man? Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I, yep. I uh, wrongly called him the Pillsbury Doughboy. And then we talked about Jesus over his other shoulder. So <laughs> now you guys are about caught up. <laughs> oh, John's also been doing well. <laughs> Yeah. So that's it for this week. <laughs> yeah. So John and I, uh, we met at, uh, should I say where? Is yeah, I don't, I don't think okay. that matters. Yeah, I guess they're yeah probably not going to sell their stock after this. So uh, we met at <laughs> FEMA Corporation, which is a uh, factory. Uh, I mean, it's not all of, it's not entirely a factory, but. That's like a main focus of it, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's man- manufacturer. Manufacturing place. Uh, they make a lot of parts for transmission parts. Maybe if- not. You probably don't want to leave that no. in. No? Okay. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Can you bleep stuff? <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the thing is just me remembering to go back and do it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um... Let's see. Maybe I can. There might be a way where I could. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll plan on cutting that out. So anyway, I met John at work <laughs> when we worked. <laughs> we worked at a place together uh, that is in a town in a state, and in this place, <laughs> we uh, uh, we crossed paths. I recall. I recall the moment. I don't recall exactly the date or anything, but I, I remember talking to a coworker there who, who used to work in the front of the building and then came to the back of the building in manufacturing where I was working at the time. And I was talking to this person and you knew that person because you worked in the front of the building. So I didn't know you. I saw you walking through, but uh, we didn't cross paths. And then, uh, I guess by proxy, I met you because you dropped a turquoise Jeep reference. Mm-hmm. That's all it took, really. That was yeah, the yeah. spawn we- <laughs> of everything. I think you said uh, cavities from all the chocolate in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> it was something very very i was like that's turquoise jeep <laughs> <laughs> so good uh i yeah and we went to a show did we go to a show shortly after that probably i've been to a handful of theirs i know i mean i remember very vividly the time when i came back from colorado to visit and we went at louis and saw them this was but, I think you were still there because we went as the Naughty Farmers that time, that first time, wasn't it? Was it the first? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. So, yeah, I think maybe it was just before we met. Those guys are on tour like crazy, which is yeah, awesome. They never stop, yeah. Never stop. Fantastic. But uh, before we met, I think it was just before I saw them with Garrett and Grand Rapids. Mm-hmm. And I think that was like part of the, like, oh shit, you know, turquoise Jeep. I just went to a show and then it was like, oh, you just went to a show. This guy's legit. And then <laughs> from there, the bond grew. So yeah. 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 <laughs> Isn't that incredible? It was an yeah, awesome yeah. group. Yep. I need to get some like uh young Humma samples or something to drop on the podcast just some mm. yeah you could introduce people that way <laughs> i think i should yeah maybe they would uh maybe they'd sponsor me <laughs> That'd be nice. maybe and then what else we had kind of a we both had kind of a churchy background right oh yeah so oh, we yeah. kind of we had we had a lot of things that we had we share a birthday like 
we definitely hit it off. The, it was, I mean, and I don't even know, because uh, I started at that job in the fall. I had, it had just been my birthday, uh, and then I started there, or it had been our birthday, and then I started working there. And so it must have been that following year that did we we would have had to have found out like around our birthday, right? Like, I don't I don't recall how we came across that yeah, knowledge. I don't know. Yeah, me neither. But I also was like leaving that job shortly after that birthday. But uh, I've always admired the Photoshop hookups that you do <laughs> for me. Well, yeah, your your photos are pretty uh, uh, kind of my Photoshop muse because you have so many funny like expressions and things that just like you get ideas from them. So uh, I hope let, that now you can screenshot the video to form <laughs> in, any face you want. <laughs> I think it's yeah. It started with those "with you always" Jesus things. Yes, and then just went from there, dude. And some of my favorites too. I love looking at those. Just seeing Garrett as Jesus okay. and being like, <laughs> he's like, "Let go, I'll catch you." Fuck <laughs> off, Jesus. <laughs> that was when I was uh, climbing with you. Yeah, yeah, that was a good time. Have you been? Uh, I'm assuming you're still doing that a lot. Yep, yep. I haven't gotten outside that much this year. I've just been down to Kentucky once so far, but probably get down to West Virginia at some point. Yeah. How much do you go um, to like climb Kalamazoo or indoor now that you're, ex I mean, you've been proficient outdoor, but how has that influenced uh, the amount that you go climbing inside? I usually go twice a week okay. and that's just to stay in shape. Sure. You know? I guess there's not really anywhere else around that you could just climb outside, no, but I imagine if you lived out here, uh, you probably wouldn't go to an indoor gym as often. Do you think that's right? Yeah, or do you, yeah. yeah, I'd probably just climb outside mostly. Yeah. And you rope climb? Do you solo climb? I don't know much about climbing, but... Yeah, we use ropes and uh, sport climbing is what we call it, where there's bolted routes and we just clip in as we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Clip-ins, yeah. You can um, You can still take falls, but not huge falls, typically. Yeah, and those falls would be like slamming up against the wall essentially right no well, not if you have a good blair oh, okay well yeah yeah okay that's not me i'm not a blair <laughs> <laughs> i heard that a guy recently uh was at the top of a climb an indoor climb and the auto belay gave out and he broke his back and Ooh. i was like that's my fear every time I'm like, why does everybody just inherently trust these things? Now I know. You shouldn't. We had somebody at our gym, an older guy, who uh, will sometimes, if you don't have a belayer and you want to practice lead climbing, will do what you call dummy leading, where you tie in and then hook onto an auto belay and then just clip as you go up. Sure. So you can, you can practice clipping, but you're relying on the auto belay, not on the rope. Mm. And this guy skipped the step where you hook into the auto belay <laughs> and so he's just climbing and clipping with nobody on the other end of the rope wow. and he got he got to the top and must have been too tired to down climb and just dropped no yeah. and I he knew think, he knew that he wasn't attached or I, he i think he realized his mistake but he was too tired maybe he was he was overweight and older Ooh. so uh i think he just had to let go <laughs> gravity <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't i don't think he got hurt seriously though that's he impressive had the, had the wind knocked out of him oh i mean yeah i'd take that but but yeah we call it dummy leading or extreme dummy leading in that case wow that's crazy i uh, were you there no okay yeah no, buddy, like buddy mine that worked there i would with, love uh, to yeah. uh see that unfold I would love yeah. like if he's like guys I can't do it anymore. I'd like to imagine it was probably like the grape stomp lady when he hit oh, the ground. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I meant the before, before he dropped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if if he was making those noises, then for sure my <laughs> advice would be like, dude, just let go. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can sue this place and get weight loss <laughs> surgery out of it. <laughs> uh, he signed a waiver. He's screwed. <laughs> I love that. You just go to a casual place trying to have fun, and they're like, you might die. <laughs> Tell us it's okay. You're like, mm, guess that's well, part that, of it. That can one's I on get him. Some, can I get some size 11 shoes? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good, man. I'm glad you're still keeping up with that. How's everything else going? Uh, it's it's good been busy we've been getting the house ready for uh, hopefully foster parenting soon so that's been a process keeping us busy yeah i'm in the former hookah lounge which will be a playroom eventually so right uh i know D- did you keep all of the akushrama most of them i, I sold yeah. the hookah but yeah sure I kept everything else you kept the fez yeah you never know when you'll need it <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Nice. That's cool. That'd be in that attic area is a really nice space for a playroom. I would think. Kids yeah, it's, have fun it's definitely kid size because the ceilings are so low. So right. So, how long exactly have you been? I mean, I know this process has been more than, um, I guess the the legal process that you've gone through because there was a whole process of talking it out and thinking about it and mentally preparing for it before deciding to move forward. But how long have you been uh, planning on this? Well, we kind of always had the plan, you know, after our relationship got more serious and we were in for the long haul, we kind of figured, Hey, in 10 years, let's, uh, you know, start the process of adoption or whatever. Okay. And so that, that time hit and we were ready and decided to go with fostering to start. And uh, Michigan so definitely s- needs, needs foster parents. So, uh, yeah, I bet, I bet uh, the economy is hard there too. So, um, so you, did you like set that time 10 years a while ago? You guys talked about it and you're just like 10 years from now, we're going to nice. Yep. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, you you seem like uh, the perfect people to be raising little ones, so I or think, at least yeah. helping, facilitating <laughs> the process. Yeah, I, you know, Gabe really balances me out because he's like, you know, super chill. Yeah. He's going. I tend to be more uptight and worry. But, you know, I've been, I'm the one that I've been reading books about, you know, childhood trauma and stuff like that, and you know looking at worst case scenarios and he's like oh it'll be fine yeah i think there's there's that sweet middle ground you know i think i'm i i totally relate with gabe with the whole i'm checking out until it's time to check in sort of (laughs) mentality uh but i also understand your desire to be extremely prepared because it's a huge responsibility so i think i would fall somewhere in the middle of of that uh probably be stressed out but i don't know shit about uh astrological signs really but people have told me that i'm a virgo which means that you're a virgo and people also say that that's supposed to have some like uh even keeled features or something right i don't know well works for works for you and keanu so yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's all that matters you know <laughs> we share a birthday with a very powerful man so i'm hoping <laughs> that just some of that success trickles down maybe a september 2nd thing so and maybe somebody pays attention and uh september 2nd they send a gift or something to both of us that'd be cool <laughs> <laughs> that'd be sweet but you know oh yeah they don't know my address so <laughs> yeah so uh Maybe we'll maybe <laughs> maybe we'll each get Vietnamese and German flags. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I actually also now have a Mexican audience, so that's pretty cool. Sweet. Yeah. We're spreading out. 
I'm really hoping my Puerto Rican family jumps on board. I uh, I don't have any listenership in there, and unless it counts under the U.S., but even then, it it uh, yeah. So I hope I get some of them. You were just keeping me a little informed of what's going on down there. I'm pretty. Uh, it's they, they, they are some impressive people because those protests were like over the top and like just wild. What are they protesting? That's how uh, checked out I am. Well, just the corruption. <laughs> the, the, the government is very corrupt, and the governor in particular is a huge asshole. And I think some uh, chats leaked recently where he was being very callous about like the, you know, the hurricane and, and I think he's homophobic too. So like, I mean, they had just massive protests and, um, I think he's said he wasn't going to go for reelection and that just pissed people off more because they want him out now. Mm. And, uh, so I don't know where it stands now if he's going to, re- he'll probably have to resign because <laughs> There's like a million people protesting. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I, you know, and and you sent me that link, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. And then I thought, like, well, why didn't they do that when Donald Trump was down there throwing paper towels after that hurricane? <laughs> well, I, I think they were. <laughs> Shit, it was crazy. They were still re- they were still reeling from everything at that point. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's unfortunate, man. I've been down there a handful of times throughout my life and really not at all recently because I would always go with my mom, but it w- there was always a sense of, I mean, a huge sense of pride and strength and community there, but there was always like, a, um, like an oppression, a feeling that like they're, I mean, not well cared for or forgotten about almost because it's yeah a lot of people don't even realize it's part of the united states uh yeah i know uh (laughs) back when i was i think i was still in college and back when i was churchy uh (laughs) i was at a a bible study (laughs) and they were doing they were doing prayer requests and mine was probably you know unspoken because I i was a closeted masturbator or something you know you know you you remember when back in the day like anytime somebody said they had an unspoken prayer request they're like somebody whacked off again you know (laughs) it was always pornography or masturbation but anyway my friend marta she's like well you know i'm I'm nervous because i'm i'm going to, to visit my family in puerto rico and there was this girl from teen mania there i don't know if you remember teen mania but no. it was like this youth cult within evangelicalism <laughs> okay, and we, used to call cool. them, we used to call them teen maniacs because they were fucking insane <laughs> and uh, this girl introduced herself as sunshine and when Marta said that she was like going to visit her her family in Puerto Rico and she was like you know stressed about the trip sunshine goes why are you being deported <laughs> and I think Marta's eye was twitching no. a little bit she's like you can't get deported to Puerto Rico. It's part of America. <laughs> oh no! There's so much wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, but people don't understand, and particularly they don't, teen, man. teen maniacs don't understand. So. Yep, I've had a lot of people throughout my life because, you know, f- first and foremost, if when I tell people that I'm half Puerto Rican, there's always like a "No, you're not." But then, uh, <laughs> where's that in Mexico? I've gotten that a lot. Um, uh yeah a lot of stuff about like needing a passport um yeah silly stuff that just people don't put together that you can just go there and use your american dollars just like (coughs) they are there except there was no tax that's probably still the same they didn't have tax there i remember that very clearly because we got video games there but the thing that they did instead of Instead of charging tax, so like a fifty dollar video game ended up being like fifty three dollars or something after tax. There they just charged fifty three dollars. Hmm, so, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody's making. Well, they probably have to pay a bunch to import stuff there for whatever reason. But yeah, that's my extent of uh, political knowledge and <laughs> economic <laughs> knowledge of the it's island. Probably, probably for the best. Probably have less stress because of it. Uh, 
Yeah, I think so. There, uh, yeah, I tr- yeah, it's too hard. I tried for a while. I was keeping up with things, just general news. Uh, but man, it's sad. <laughs> There's a lot of sad stuff going on, and just yeah. even around here. And then I just try to forget about it so I can go back to. I got enough stuff going on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, if you can't if you can't change it, it's like just extra stress for nothing. That's okay. I'm so glad you said that because that's been my point uh about a lot of things. I'll get back to this in just a moment here, but people get really wound up about stuff that they can't change. And I get it that if you've got enough people wound up, then you certainly can make change, but don't get so pissed off about sports that shit i I think that is kind of the birth of me beginning my whole uh i don't i okay i can't say i don't care because i do care but just like i'm not gonna let nonsense affect me uh when i started seeing people get like fired up over sport sports games like Fuck! The Patriots lost. <laughs> like, what? You're not on the team. <laughs> you, they give you a jersey if you're on the team. You bought that for a hundred dollars. Like you're not. <laughs> stop getting so worked up over sports. Yeah, sorry. That's my little rant about sports. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's just kind of where it started. Like, I don't care as much as these other people do as like most other people do about who wins, let alone how well a player does or how far they carry a ball. Like all of that is just nonsense to me. I like, I mean, I might watch it. I'm not saying that I hate this. I hate sports, but I just feel like people get too invested. And then that same mentality is used with people on politics and uh, news and other things. Maybe not the same people, but that same sort of like, I'm hardcore and my team needs to win. And I'm just like, yo, I'll be all right. I yeah. still have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. That's not yeah. real, but I mean, stuff changes. I vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never really cared about sports. I think I used to pretend to care when I was trying to be straight and fit in, but yeah, I, professional I just, wrestling though. Oh yeah. Yeah. That sure. That's the mighty crossover. Shawn Michaels. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this is back. This is back in the rockers day though. With the, mm. when the mullet the was blonde, in its full glory, the blonde mullet. Yeah. Yeah. Before it started thinning. How lame were you, uh, when you were super into Jesus and trying to be straight? Oh, I was terrible. Yeah. I can oh, imagine yeah. when you said like being at church camp. Yeah, I never, I, was... I never did church camp. Well, oh, okay. I guess in, in elementary school I did once, but what yeah, was, was the maniac thing you were talking about? Where was I was that? never, I was never part of teen mania. That's, oh. that's like, that's like its own cultish organization. Yeah. But where were you when the friend got told? when we, when I encountered her, I was, I was at a Bible study. Oh, Bible study. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus yeah, but oh, I was I was <laughs> after school Jesus camp. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was I was pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got better. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, what what changed? You were just like I can't deal with this shit anymore. Uh, well, I was a 27 year old virgin who had never even had my first kiss and I uh, was about to lose my mind. So I decided that, uh, it wasn't worth it to go through life alone. Wow. And, and that was, that was because you're like, uh, I know I'm into guys, but I can't be into guys. Is that the feeling? Okay. Yeah. And okay. So you're like, I'm not going to fucking kiss anybody because girls look gross and God said no to <laughs> right. guys. Wow. Yeah. God. I mean, 
obviously there are so many people going through exactly that every day, but that sounds like hell. Like there's, yeah, I was, mean, I mean, it, it, like imagine, I mean, it's just life without hope because yeah, um, it's like back when I was in the closet, it's like, cause I wouldn't talk to anybody about it because you have so much shame about it. I mean, since, you know, early childhood, I, my dad was a fundamentalist pastor. Everybody, you know, talked about gay people being going, going to hell and being immoral. And you know, I was in a, a tiny town in Wisconsin. That's where I grew up. And this is before the internet. So we were all ignorant and, you know, there was like one gay person in town and everybody treated their, them like they, like some haunted house. Like if you, mm. I remember one person saying they didn't want to go there because they were afraid they'd get AIDS from touching the door handles. Um, wow. So it was just like, I mean, we were all completely ignorant, which, you know, just makes you fearful. What was his and, name? Do you remember? Nope. Okay. They call him anything? Nothing? No. Probably. But, you yeah. know, I was, yeah. I was very young then, but it's like, it's so early. You get all this shame about it. And, uh, you know, you, you think you're going to go to hell and, so, but it's like over time, like in your twenties, you know, I, I was in Michigan by then in, in Michigan, in your twenties, like all your friends are getting married. Yeah. So right. you're in, yeah. you're like going to wedding after wedding. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, I get to live the rest of my life alone just to make, you know, Jesus happy or something. And it's like, and it was like a secret as well. So it's like this, I would describe it as a weight that like settles on you. And so like, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you have this weight that settles on you and you carry it all day until you go to bed. And then, and you think, well, this is the rest of my life. So it's like with no hope or anything like that, I, you know, it's, you kind of have to be like, well, I guess I'll either uh, go to hell or off myself. Cause it's, you know, there's wow. just, you can't live without hope. What made you happy at that time? Uh, I just put all my energy into friendship. So I would always be like the reliable friend and try and be there for everybody. Cause I okay. didn't, I didn't have romantic relationships distracting me. So I just tried to be, you know, everything to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and people do need that as well. People adore having those friends, but man, that must've been so hard to just feel like, um, like you could never, I don't know. I, I don't want to speak for you. Would you say that you felt like, uh, when you felt attracted to men that you were like, that was the devil controlling you or something at that time? No, no. You I just, just thought I was bad. I thought I was a bad person. Like I, I can read back and old like journals and things from back then. And this is a time, mind you, when I was like, super helpful and like a pretty decent person you're like a good person yeah. and uh but like reading these old journals like i was convinced that i was the scum of the earth just because i was gay and it's like no mat no no amount of good would offset it i always just felt like i was trash wow and um yeah it's but like you, I, I thought a lot of kids uh, gay kids go through this too like when i was little I would have to be the best at everything. Like in academics, I would like, I would be really upset if I got an A minus because a lot of gay kids have to be, I, I got to be the best little boy in the world because I'm this mm. defective thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's like Asians. Yes. Hmm. Maybe my Vietnam, <laughs> my Vietnamese straight A fans. Well, <laughs> uh, man, that's, that's sad. And yeah, God. So you still have those journals? Do you ever look back at them? Uh, yeah, I, I was going through old papers and I ran across them because I was throwing out, you know, old like churchy stuff. And I was, and I, it was, it was kind of, I was like, wow, like I'd forgotten because it, it's, it's like two different lives. Oh, sure. Like, that right. seems, it seems like a completely different person. So reading back to that, I was like, holy cow, like I really, really hated myself when they, like when they say, you know, when they, these closet cases in like Congress do whatever they can to hurt gay people and everybody calls them self-loathing closet cases. It's like the self-loathing is real. Like I hated myself. Wow. And, and when you live like that, then you, if you see people like, 
you gay people actually living their lives, you're like, well, why aren't they miserable like me? So then you like hate them too. So it's, wow. it was a mess. It's so, and it changes more than just your behavior. It's like your whole brain, your whole way of thinking must be completely different now. I mean, you recognize it as two separate people and that being, you said, well, was it 27 when you made, when you were like, this is it? That yep. is, to a lot of people, that's an adult. That's like a real ass adult. So you made it that far uh, suffering in a way. That's, damn. And this was, I don't, I don't mean to age you, but like, could you give me a round what year that would be? Because I know things things are always changing. I think, great, two, I think it was around great. I think it was around two thousand seven. Okay. Um, and yeah, I probably would have left the church at about the same time, but it probably took me another year to like shake the guilt and mm. not, you know, and not ha- take to lose the fear that you're programmed with. So you're essentially like. Um, because there are homosexual people who also are into church and, but in your, in your mind, you recognize that in order to feel good about yourself, you would have to detach completely. Uh, no, the feeling good about myself was actually, oh, and a pastor actually helped with that. Um, really? cause at the time, I mean, my, my dad was a pastor, as I mentioned, and there was a Lutheran pastor at Western who really helped me a lot, pastor Bob. And he kind of helped me feel good about myself and that I could be, that I was a good person. Like, you know, could, uh, could be a gay, good person, but I, I was also, you know, I got a good therapist too at the time. So, Oh, uh, nice. That's probably so, super key. The therapist. Oh. Yeah, that was that was huge. Um, yeah, in like much? the self the self esteem and living authentically, that was definitely like a therapy thing. How much would you suggest that to uh, other people who might be struggling with some of those feelings you had? Oh, I I recommend it to people for almost Everything. anything. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's because we. I mean, we all have like you know baggage that we don't realize where we picked it up and it's just kind of working through stuff and getting tools to deal with the stuff that, you know, life's going to throw at you. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Um, technically I'm a therapist. How about that? Nice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Actually a therapist, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's been neat. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) moving on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but leaving, leaving the church, I'm trying to think of what, started that it's it's one of those things where you know how when you when you grow up churchy they never want you to ask questions yeah yeah. they they like their doubt is you know they have to squash down their doubt because they're afraid yeah yeah Um, doubt is the devil because like for me it was it was a house of cards and once i started asking questions yeah mine was it, 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 (laughs) it collapsed yeah yeah, I got to I don't know. I was probably eleven or twelve. I was like, "You're t- you're telling me that you're putting alligators on the boat with anything?" Oh, dude, my uh, <laughs> speaking of which, my my, <laughs> my parents were coming back from Florida this spring, and they stopped by the Creation Museum to go oh. to to Noah's Ark in Kentucky and to pay their respects. Do they have yeah. the broken wood? Oh, this is a giant arc replica they have. Oh, there. wow. Okay. And, cool. and they, they were showing Gabe all these photos because, you know, he's, his parents are Mary worshipers. So they're always trying to slip Jesus stuff at him. Gotcha. Okay. And they're showing him, pic- <laughs> they're showing him pictures of all this shit. And one of them had dinosaurs Ooh. Uh, on, the, on the arc. And on the arc, they, they were talking nonsense. Because that's oh my God. like, like the f- super fundies. They try to explain everything with Noah's Ark, 
They're like, why do we have caves? Noah's Ark. Why did the dinosaurs die? Noah's Ark. Everything is Noah's Ark. <laughs> and, and Gabe's just patiently like, huh, what's that? Like, he's, he's just leading them on. Oh, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the museum is like, mm, we're bored. Let's see if we can pull a fast one on them and see if they'll believe that we put dinosaurs on a wooden boat. Whew. <laughs> Must have been some strong ass wood. <laughs> that is not a balsa boat. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Well, if that's not enough, you know. Okay. Ooh, I know. Uh, I watched Religious Bill Maher. Did you yeah. see that? That might yep. have been around that same time. 2000 I'm sure he talked to the nine, the guy maybe? Ken Yeah, Ken Ham is the anti-evolution guy that that Kurt Cameron's all buddy buddy with and and they always, you know, try to That was the say, guy who debated Bill Nye, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the guy the guy that thinks that evolution couldn't happen because bananas fit in our hands. That's his big argument. Damn, I really want to wrap my head around that. Well, God made them to fit right in your hand, so evolution couldn't be real. Just bananas. But they That's... also fit really well into monkeys' hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Damn it. The ham master. Well, yeah, this Bill Maher documentary, he essentially, like, I don't know. He talks to people about Jesus and religion uh who essentially just don't know how to speak well enough about it where they end up kind of debunking it themselves talking about it but yeah i don't know there's a lot of good points and essentially it comes to, like at the end of the documentary wraps it up saying like pretty much the major reason behind all violence like major wars and violence like that is some sort of religious uh, cover or yeah uh, motivation it's like well that's kind of true i mean there's a lot of that and like propaganda and stuff so yeah it's interesting but yeah there's a there's a famous uh journalist named well he was a journalist and then author named christopher hitchens he was a pretty famous atheist and uh, I read one of his books and it was kind of recapping the things that he'd seen as a journalist. And mm-hmm. it was mostly war and violence that was religiously motivated. And oof, it was, it was heavy shit. Like just, you know. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not what they, not what they intend uh, for you to think about when somebody brings up religion. But yeah, I guess I was more, I was like super gung ho as a young kid, like catch me in Awanas, getting all them badges on my vest and oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, me too. <laughs> I was up in there. Did you, did you ever learn anything useful? Like, did they ever do the stuff in the back of the book where you're supposed to learn like camping stuff, or was it all just the Bible memorization? You know, uh, I don't, I don't remember much of any of it very well, but. I know that I was sick as fuck at the memorization bits. So ironically, I don't remember if there was any like camping or anything, but mm, I probably have the uh, vest around here and I could ask somebody. (laughs) (laughs) Hey man, does this mean I went camping? (laughs) I'm going to need to talk to that troop leader now. (laughs) (laughs) It was yeah. like the Bible. It was like the Bible Boy Scouts, but minus the practical stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't. I don't think there was much useful out of that. But I also was so young doing it, where it's like, I don't know how much do uh, how much do people normally remember from being like ten or under? I remember bits and pieces here or there, but not much of the specifics as far as religion goes. Uh, my mom was always like super deep into it. My dad was like, well, we're going because that's what families do. So we, uh, and my parents were divorced, you know, so I would go 
every other weekend with my mom, every other weekend with my dad. And then, uh, when I turned like 11 or 12, we moved from the sticks into Portage and that's when we quit going. My dad quit going. So now I'm like 11 or 12 and every other weekend I don't have to go anymore. And they went to different churches. My mom went to a black church. My dad went to a very white church. And so I was getting different experiences, but I would still go with my mom every other week. Uh, until I turned 16, I got a car and I was like, eh, I'm just going to go somewhere else. <laughs> I have the control now, but yeah, I, I, uh, I stopped being a fan of it pretty early on. It was just kind of like, I don't know, maybe the same nonchalant feeling about sports. Like if you really want to do it, why do I have to come here to do this? Like, why do I have to be around these people who... I don't know, probably beat each other up when they leave. But, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, kind of checked out and I got to a point where I would start bringing homework to church and I would just be doing my homework <laughs> up in there. And yeah, yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Sorry, God, but yeah, I just haven't gotten into it. I, I don't <sighs> Do you believe in anything? Like outside of science? No, I, I'm I'm good. I I've had my fill. I like that. That's I'm, where I, that's where I am too. If so. if there is anything, I'm not worried about it. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, a good person. So, or, I guess. If you're burning in hell, I guess I am too. So <laughs> I've poked fun at one too many people. <laughs> as long as Keanu's there with us, I'm be fine. John Wick Four. The, <laughs> the wick is lit. <laughs> oh wow! What's the first CD you ever bought? uh cd let's let's go back oh yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) sorry i didn't yeah okay Uh, i should i should take that back because i was around before cds even yeah so um if we're talking real music uh my brother my big brother gave me a cassette of weird al yankovic's polka party oh dude mine is is running with scissors oh yeah Uh, (laughs) i i I I still love the album to this day it's fantastic like (laughs) Yeah, living dude. with living with the hernia, Christmas at Ground Zero, all that. On it. It's <laughs> so good. I, I feel like my dad was probably so bummed that we liked Weird Al so much. <laughs> <laughs> Every car ride, to turn that shit over. We're listening to uh, Amish Paradise again. <laughs> oh, Weird Al was touring in detroit recently and some of gabe's oh. friends got to play with him because he, he was touring with an orchestra no like, shit why couldn't you get in on that action he was touring with an orchestra yeah wow that's beautiful mm-hmm. i hope he comes out here that would be a red rock show to go to. yeah i've never seen him i can't believe i haven't either i, I yeah, really i've never seen him love to do that someday yeah and he's i mean he's obviously still going at it still doing yep. it uh, Garrett is a huge Weird Al fan. Maybe this all makes sense. Maybe this all ties together <laughs> because it doesn't make sense, but it does. It's that turquoise Jeep, Weird Al, stupid shit that a lot of people don't appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of people, a lot of people would say that's not good. Meanwhile, <laughs> there's like a small cheering section of people who are like, "This is the shit." <laughs> I I love Weird Al. Yeah, how, how can you not like Weird Al? I mean, he's yeah. such a like a good natured. Like his humor is all good natured, you know. It is. It is, dude. Yeah, and like Turqu- Turquoise Jeep, like even even Shia Mouth is like you can't be mad at them. I know, and you meet the people, and they're fa- like they're great dudes too, which is awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I. I have they come out with anything in a while? I I 
don't know if it's a matter of me not keeping up as much or or I know Flint Flossie kind of broke out and uh did his own his own project. I have one of those albums, but do you know if they're still like as I a think group? they're I think they're still putting stuff out though um Young Hama and Pretty Rahim I don't think are with them anymore. That's not what I want to hear. That's a big yeah, that's a big loss. <laughs> Yeah, huge. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, interesting. I, w- I wonder how all that started. Do you know their origin? I guess I should just ask them. Maybe I could well, get what you might call it on the podcast. Good, good luck. They don't. They never break character, so you're not going to get. That's okay. I just want to know <laughs> how it started. <laughs> you can tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, highly suggest that. If anyone's listening to this and you don't know who Turquoise Jeep is, what would you suggest would be like a good first? My introduction was fried or fertilized. I'd start there. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, you want to start you want to start back, uh work your way up towards treat me like a pirate, but don't start with something like that because you need to appreciate the roots. Uh I like to dance. That one is that what it's called? Flint Flossy? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, and but you got to see the evolution of their their skills and, and, and their production values. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it was or like, like uh, stretchy pants. Like oh, that song, yeah. That's like the OG. Yeah. And the, like, the rhythm is all messed up on it and stuff. Yes. It and, sounds uh, terrible. I skip yeah. it all the time. <laughs> But yeah, they just get progressively Man, better. Man, I need those <laughs> trash <trenches. laughs> Yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah, probably most people probably know Smang It. Start back there. Uh, then Sex Syrup. Make sure to get a good appreciation of Slick Mahoney. Uh, mm. go, go grab my belt. <laughs> 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 wow yeah that's so funny man i was like i started listening to i was younger i mean this was almost 10 years ago probably when we pro- when young Hama and them introduced themselves to our earwaves but yeah maybe like seven to ten ish years ago but i didn't have much going on as far as like an adult life but i remember thinking like okay slick mahoney is too grown for this activity because he's never at the live shows and stuff he's probably like a computer programmer who (laughs) also just does like a song or two (laughs) here and there like why wouldn't you just go full bore into turquoise jeep but i guess it makes sense as an adult now i could see why (laughs) slick mahoney may have not wanted to (laughs) <laughs> to dedicate himself to touring as Slick Mahoney. I uh I actually was introduced to Turquoise Jeep and the Hulk Hogan album at the Whoa. same on the, on the same trip. Uh, we were on a climbing trip to Kentucky and my buddy Evan was oh, had a, nice. a climbing mix and it was back and forth Turquoise Jeep and the Hulk Hogan and uh Wesley Willis. But uh, Wesley Willis, Rock and yeah. Roll McDonald's? Yeah. Oh, so that was my nice. that was my introduction to all of that stuff dude i i beat batman's ass yeah er, (laughs) bert yeah oh my god dude i don't think we've ever talked about wesley willis together that's like and that's a deeply obscure reference yeah (laughs) dude people people don't know i'm trying to think (laughs) of a a banger off of that hulk hogan album uh and i know it but i can't well i think the Hulkster's back is a song all about his uh, biceps. Okay, it that, might that be that. I want to say there was a Beach Patrol. Oh was yeah, that, that one will get that one will get stuck in your head with with Jimmy Hart. Yeah, in the yeah. background, I was walking oh, down the beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what he he kind of talk raps. It's not quite yes. rapping. That's right. That's yeah. And The Rock has a song where he's talk rapping as well. Maybe but, it's a WWE contract thing. Vince McMahon's like, you're gonna talk and <laughs> rap. 
<laughs> the white kids need to understand it. <laughs> Maybe something like that. <laughs> Vince McMahon looks like uh, my dad. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god. In the, in the head. In the head. Vince McMahon before uh before a million cycles of steroids looks like my day. <laughs> 90s <laughs> early 90s wins <laughs> okay yeah. Yeah. you know when, when it, you know though with the hulk hogan album like it's all kind of laughable but when he actually does sing is when it gets truly frightening oh. and that's hulkster in heaven hulkster in when heaven he's... okay guys check <laughs> out hulkster in heaven and report back let me know how it is because i need to check if... it out too yeah, if you can uh, get through the entire song, you have a strong constitution because he's singing. He's singing about a dead fan. Somehow oh. he still he still manages to be narcissistic, and it has the uh, <laughs> the uh, amazing line. I Too used to tear vitamins. my shirt. <laughs> no, he said I used to tear my shirt, but now you've torn my heart. Oh wow. Wow. It's rough. So it's like an it Eminem stand sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Hulk. <laughs> only only with only with Jimmy Hart playing single keys on a synthesizer in the background. <laughs> Still yelling through his phone. <laughs> the mouth of the south. <laughs> Well, wow, they really had a thing going. That was like the prime time of my upbringing was watching wrestling. Uh, I don't know. Like, I know a lot of people who hate wrestling and were just like totally averse to it. Maybe the same people who like uh, professional sports. I don't know. I wonder what it was that like it made my brothers and I love wrestling, but I only had a few friends who also liked wrestling. I feel like most people didn't like it's fake. I don't know. Did you feel that way? Do you have like a ton of friends who liked wrestling? No. Well, I mean, when I, I was into it when I lived in Wisconsin and I, we had such a tiny town. I basically had like a handful of friends. Two of them were yeah. in wrestling. Uh, same so, but we but we were like really into it you know mm -hmm. oh yeah i used to like overnights with friends sleepovers we would like fake wrestle and pull out the couch and fuck it up oh hell yeah the mattress yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be and, and being the butch closet case i was i had in my bedroom i had, oh, posted, dude. I had okay. posters of the rockers and doogie hauser mg nice <laughs> Dude, I bet you were a submission specialist. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> Let me choke you out. <laughs> no, John. <laughs> hey, hit me again. I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Tap harder. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah I think about that because like I I mean I was thinking about that as I was bringing it up because my body slams were platonic, but it must have felt a little different. I guess maybe did it mm, not? I guess it's no. you're just oh playing. no no not not like when we were enacting it. No, yeah, you no, no, it was just it was it was all the you know we used to have those LJN big rubber wrestler figures you know they're like this oh big, yeah 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 and oh, yeah. you could I like give somebody a concussion with um yeah but yeah we're like we were we were like making stories and you know writing storylines and things we used to like draw our own wwf magazines and and stuff Damn. so like yeah we were like really into it so it was nothing like when i watched it i was definitely you know had a huge crush on Shawn michaels oh yeah but like when we're reenacting stuff you're like you know too busy trying not to hurt yourself to <laughs> think about anything else would you watch it with friends yeah how how um, how did you feel when you saw the heartbreak kid and you're like damn he looks good but i also can't like say that to my friends uh i back then you know it was like that was during puberty and i okay. was pretty I was pretty clueless as it was because I gotcha. went to I went to uh, Lutheran elementary school, Baptist junior high, and a 
Holy Roller High School. Never wow. had sex ed. So I had no idea what was happening during wow. puberty. Um, I was flying blind. So I was mostly confused back then about everything. Uh, that makes sense. So but, puberty too, and you're an adolescent and everything, you're still, I mean, generally just figuring it all out to begin with. Yeah, so, it's not like, yeah. especially if nobody's talking to you about it, you really right. don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. I do remember the... Uh, they were doing a house show in Madison and we went, for, I think it was for my birthday or something, which I still have the program from. This would have been like 1991 and the rockers were going to be wrestling and I was ecstatic. And then Shawn Michaels got injured right before it and he didn't show up. And I was uh, devastated to say the least. Wow. God. If he only knew the impact that him getting <laughs> injured had on gay America. <laughs> Damage. Dude, have you seen him recently? He looks terrible. <laughs> oh, he's, he's like a super Christian too. He was yeah. in he was in this really he was in this really awful Christian mus- movie called The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. I know nothing. I know yeah, nothing well, about this and I don't know if i want to know about this it's probably best to just avoid it but yeah i know that he like he had his issues with drugs and alcohol such as the story goes and then got really into religion and eventually shortly well i don't know shortly after he started changing all his gear to have crosses on it and stuff but but i know he wasn't wrestling like too long after that it just turned into like Okay, Shawn Michaels is a badass wrestler and a cool guy. And now Shawn Michaels is <laughs> an evangelist and a deer hunter. So. And no fun at all. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess that, like, Ted DiBiase did the same thing, too. Did he? Yeah, I, didn't, a- I didn't keep up with him. I know that his, I think it, one of his son, is this... I think his son may have wrestled. Maybe that was... Uh, Could be. Yeah, but the million the dollar man, I mean, he knows how to make a buck and that, like, being a pastor is the way to do it. So he, he became a pastor after he left. No so. shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was like, tax free. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's What's got a price, especially these <laughs> dumbass church people. <laughs> He's... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see him count his money after church <laughs> He's shoving it into poor people's mouths <laughs> everybody's got <laughs> he personally is handing out the tithe bucket during <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, he's busting that out in a church service. He's like, oh, you know, yeah. everybody's got a price, and it's the blood <laughs> of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Dude, he's just cutting a promo every Sunday. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. And G- Jesus paid that price, but you know what? <laughs> my car ain't free, so pay up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all need to pay the price. Oh, wow. Oh, I wonder if he has like a diamond encrusted, uh, tithe bucket that he passes around that'd be nice (laughs) he probably has a diamond encrusted cross probably yeah he just tucks it under during service and then when it's over he (laughs) whips it out big cuban link chain wow yeah well i mean i think he uh he probably wrestled smarter he got out with more of a brain i think than sean did uh sean looks like he's gotten super kicked every morning (laughs) <laughs> but didn't didn't that happen because he got in a fight like a bar fight with some like marines or something isn't that how, when his Did eye he? went wonky oh yeah oh i heard okay i heard about a bar fight and uh like triple h helped him but i don't know if it's the same one i didn't realize that it was yeah he showed up to an was... event and his eye had gone wonky from a fight he was in so wow yeah that's real unfortunate because when you got a wonky eye it really changes everything have you seen workaholics yeah 
you know, like Carl, uh, he's actually the director of the show, but they're a drug dealer in the show. He's got the wonky eye. It's like, yeah, it's, that's all you can focus on <laughs> when somebody's got a wonky oh. eye. Speak, speaking of workaholics, remember the Lord's Force episode? Oh, yes, dude. Did you ever, did those guys ever come to a church that you were going to? No. Uh-uh. Or was that like the real young? guys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was probably just too rural, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they would go to churches that could like pack them in, and they had to, they had to get paid. I thought that that episode is so funny. The gay lords force, <laughs> Adam comes out trying to rip a phone book. <laughs> oh god, it's like one of my favorite yeah, shows yeah. ever, dude. You might need to explain to your listeners what the lords force was. Oh yeah, I guess just so you guys know, so it's not an inside thing. Uh, it's they called like, it the power. It was the power team. Was the, the power official team? Name. Is that what they call yeah. it? Yeah. So essentially, a bunch of jacked dudes that would do uh, feats of strength, uh, but essentially giving the props to the Lord for doing the <laughs> feats of strength. So yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I guess they would go from church to church and show off their strength and then workaholics uh made a goof on it and <laughs> two of the guys two of the guys in the group uh <laughs> they they were found <laughs> they took them out to a bar to get drinks and then they <laughs> they were going down to the alleyway for a cigarette and the guys go out to join them and they're making out and it was, it was uh the guy who ran the power team the lord's force in the episode kicks them off the team so the guys at the workaholics the main guys they uh organize the gay lord's force so it's, the, <laughs> it's those gay dudes doing the strength feats at their house selling tickets in their yard for the <laughs> event so funny i think they they like show up and uh i think i did they let them back in do you remember the episode did they just like I let them back think, in the lord's i think at the event? end they do get back in but yeah that was, yeah, that was i think they took off from the gay lord's force event but <laughs> watch the episode it's hilarious yeah <laughs> yeah that was uh, what a weird thing it was big in the 90s like when i was in high school and they, they would like go to to public schools and talk about like you know not doing drugs and stuff and then they'd be like but if you want to see the rest of our show come to the church this whatever saturday and so they'd like lure public school students to the church to to give them the the old one too so yeah i it's so bizarre to me that they uh that they i don't know this era the 80s 90s pro wrestling hulk hogan it was all like there are huge huge names people are like oh my god these guys are so jacked but you know they're like don't do drugs meanwhile steroids in the ass all the time (laughs) people just thought like wow if you work really hard you can get that big no (laughs) no No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, even in, the, in drugs, Hulk Hogan's, kids. in his song, he even says it. He says, "Training prayers, vitamins." Right. Yeah, that's all it takes. Say your prayers. Take your vitamins. Okay, what vitamins are you on, bro? <laughs> let me get. <laughs> <laughs> let me get the name of that vitamin you take. <laughs> or yeah, or if you watch the old promos where they're totally coked out of their mind too, <laughs> clearly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, Macho Man for sure. <laughs> just, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Vince was like, do the coke, Macho. <laughs> You've got a promo. It's like, I'm trying to be clean. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. He's a goddamn maniac. <laughs> <laughs> You're wild. Randy. <laughs> You're a savage, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> John, we're over an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can wrap this thing up, dude. I, I know that's an unnatural way to just kind of close it out, but I know that we're going to do this again sometime. So Sweet. Yeah. Fun like, talking to you. Yeah, dude. Thanks again for doing this. Uh, do you have anything you want to like talk about or promote or social media handle or anything? No, no. no. All my right. my well, stuff's not that interesting. Yeah, neither is mine, but 
yeah anyway thanks again john i really appreciate it it's been nice seeing you and talking you to too. you and it's my uh, pleasure yeah i look forward to doing it again soon man uh this will come out soon i'm undecided if i'll put it out yet this week or wait and like put it out as a like just like another weekly episode next week so i'll keep you updated all right all right cool. bro well take care man i'll you talk to you soon sounds good see you All right, guys, we are all wrapped up with John. Um, always nice hanging out with him. Well, virtually, I guess. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen him in person, but always nice seeing him, talking to him. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. There's a lot that was left undiscussed. Um, yeah. He's got a lot to talk about. I've got a lot to talk to him about, and maybe we'll get a little bit deeper into it. You know, sometimes people feel a little nervous the first time talking, but uh, I think we saw that go away a little bit. Actually, we saw that go away completely pretty early, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, love having people on. Look forward to doing it again. Uh, if you guys see, I got the new uh, Taking the Credit sticker on the back of this laptop um hit me up if you want one of those and yeah i will see you guys next time thanks for tuning in always appreciate it and uh help me make this money all right see you guys <laughs>